Good morning and uh, good to be here. It's actually afternoon in Houston. So let me start this way. I'll tell you a story. The year is 2016. I was doing my MBA at the time. And during the second year of MBA, you have to do a capstone project, like a one-year project. I'm an electrical engineer. And I have, I have a master's in electrical engineering. I used to work for Hewlett Packard. And my intention to do MBA was to, you know, accelerate my career in the tech world. At the same time, but unknown to me, my wife, Dr. Bhavna Rao, she's here. She just flew in yesterday, last night, to be here with me. She, she was a hospitalist at a big hospital system in Houston. And she was seeing the writing on the wall that it was going to get very, very tough for employed physicians, especially hospitalists. And she was planning an exit, but she knew that solo practice traditional model was not it. At that time, she was hearing about this subscription model in primary care. And that's when she asked me if I wanted to do my capstone project on uh, DPC. That's when our world, our paths collided, merged, our lives changed. Fast forward, this is me Presenting my capstone is Texas A&M, and uh, I'm, the capstone was a, a business model, a lean startup model for a DPC. That was my capstone project. That's my project report, and you can see the name Meridian Springs Primary Care, the website, the logo, the tagline, everything was done as part of my capstone project. So I graduated May 19th, 2017, and we opened doors May 1st, 2017. Of course, you know, everything is easy on paper, but it, there's a lot of hard work, especially because we are both full-time employed. This is us transporting an office desk at 2 a.m. just a week before we open doors. But everything was worth it just because of this. This is day one, own clinic, exit from the system. What we found out from the get-go with this model was we were able to do, solve problems, think outside the box. A couple of months after we opened doors, Houston was hit with Hurricane Harvey. There was huge flooding, and almost for a week, none of the hospital systems, none of the medical facilities were open. We had telemedicine from day one, like any other DPC, and we did not have the constraints and the chains of the CPT code. And we were seeing a lot of messages, frantic messages from parents on WhatsApp groups and, and uh, Facebook groups, be, mostly be parents with sick kids. So we decided, let's open it up. Let's open telemedicine to all of Houston for free. And that one week, we saw over 100 plus kids that did not have anywhere else to go. This is Shell recognizing us as one of the heroes of Houston for the work we did during Harvey. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing a couple of years later when, when, <laughs> yes. Same thing a little, a couple of years later when COVID hit, a lot of our doctor friends who were doctors in the hospitals around 
they did not have access to N95 masks. I think all of you know more than me about that. By then, we were so well entrenched in the community. We, had, we knew all the business around. We approached a construction company that was one of our friends. They gave access to their suppliers, and we were able to order over 2,000 masks and distribute to all of the doctor friends who did not have access to these masks. That's one of the things. A year later, we decided with our friends and members, we would raise some money to abolish medical debt in our community. So we were able to raise over, uh, abolish over $600,000 in debt, giving 389 families in our community their lives back. So DPC doctors think of patient, uh, doctor-patient relationships, uh, work-life balance as a great thing. Yes, it is. But from my experience, the biggest thing of DPC is its positive impact on the community, which we saw firsthand. I, I'm a practical, pragmatist, realist. I don't want to paint a rosy picture. It was a lot of challenges and struggle and still is. Let me not lie about that. In any membership model, there is this thing called churn. Churn is the rate at which your members, it might be retail, it might be employers, the rate at which they leave. We, we had that problem as well. And we were perplexed, why would anybody leave a DPC with that kind of seven-star service? But it does happen in any uh, membership model. As we looked at what are the causes of that through Hint, why were retail members, why were small business leaving us we found an interesting thing. I found out that the biggest reason why, even today, that members and, and small business left us was when they got insurance. That's when it hit me, thanks to MBA, that we have a positioning problem. In, in marketing lingo, positioning is how a customer sees a service or a brand in relationship to other services or brands. So what employers and retail were seeing was that DPC was an insurance alternative. This was the positioning statement in their mind. And their thinking was, when I get insurance, I don't need DPC. DPC is primary care, insurance is comprehensive care, that's where I want to be, and I'm already paying the premium. Even though I love DPC, I don't want to pay over and above what I'm already paying, the double pay. So this was the thinking, this was the positioning of DPC in the minds of retail and small business. Bigger employers, it's a different game, but in small business, this small business and retail, they behave the same. So now this is a problem that we had to solve, which means we had to reposition DPC from being an insurance alternative to being the core of healthcare, with or without insurance. Without insurance is obvious, but with insurance, we needed to put DPC embedded in insurance. That's what was my next challenge and the most frustrating one. What I did, this was about two and a half, three years ago, I would say, I started reaching out to brokers. Completely, they completely ignored me. Nobody would talk to me. Nobody considered what we were doing, anything, more, anything special. The few that talked to me, they, were, they demeaned, devalued DPC so much that there was no value in uh, pursuing the conversation with them. But there's also good news, which is there's an ecosystem of innovative disruptors. Uh, 
advisors, benefit advisors, solution provi providers like the ones they are here. So I was able to learn and found my own benefits company, MedPrime, in my quest to create a DPC health plan. And by the way, the brokers that ignore me today, some of them are my agents that sell my DPC plan. <laughs> So in my quest to create the DPC plan, basically was, it started with the idea of embedding DPC into insurance. But then I want to show you an example of an employer that have been with us for the last three years, and the journey they took from DPC membership to DPC health plan that they are in today. So they joined us about three years ago as just DPC membership for their employees. But then, as I anticipated, last year, they wanted to get insurance. Fear is the biggest motivator to get insurance. But by then, I had started my benefits company, even though I did not have the DPC health plan. I put them on a plan, a self-funded plan, which was not optimal, but way better than the fully insured plan that they were looking at. But still, there was this problem. They were, they were paying for the premium, and they were paying for DPC membership. Not optimal, but it was at least better than what they had before. Again, as I anticipated, this year at renewal, the owner said, she would keep the DPC for their family, but would only need insurance for their employers. They don't want DPC membership for employer, employees, just for their family. And to her surprise and delight, I said, don't worry about it. I showed her this plan. DPC, I said, is already em embedded in this plan. You don't have to make the choice. It's already there. She was elated. But there is a trifecta here. Just embedding DPC in a health plan is not a big thing. I mean, anybody can do that. But what this plan did, working with underwriters, we found that when you embed a DPC in a health plan, it actually brings the risk level of the group way below. That means it translates to a lower premium. So it's not just a single payment, it's now a lower risk tier that, that the employer can get. More than that, the trifecta, the, when in this plan, the DPC doctor actually steers the patient to the right level of care at the right price in the right location. Of course, the, right lo the level of care comes from the DPC. We provide the doctor with the performance and quality metrics that then they can use to make the choice to steer the patient to the right level of care and the right place and the right price. What happens then? As you can see in this plan, the out-of-pocket cost is $0 for the patient. The same group had an employee just last month that was diagnosed with a catastrophic issue that needs surgery. She's scheduled to have the surgery next month. Guess what is her out-of-pocket cost? Zero dollars. Because she is making the decision with her PCP, with her DPC doctor. Zero dollars. This is the trifecta. You might be wondering, how is all this relevant to you? You know. Selling these kinds of plans is for big DPC, not for a single doctor. We all know the sinking feeling which I've had when you go talk to an employer and they say, how many doctors, how many location? The conversation ends there. So this, this is the Hint Connect picture I wanted to show you. 
what Hint has done has democratized DPC. You don't have to be big, you just need to appear big. That's what Hint Connect does. So with anybody, any one of you, regardless of the size, can sell a DPC health plan. So one takeaway I want you to have, if you forget everything I said, one takeaway I, I want you to have is that don't you are in a DPC mindset. I want you to shift that mindset from a DPC, which is a cog in the wheel. It's a primary care. It has all these problems of churn to a DPC health plan mindset, a solution provider, the one in the driver's seat taking care of the patient. That is one thing that I want you to take away from this. In 2019, I resigned from Hewlett Packard running the global software R&D. My colleagues thought I was crazy. I am crazy, but you know. But I, I, I wanted to go all in because I sensed that we were at the ground floor of a superstructure. When I went to a lot of benefit conferences last year, in many of them I had to explain what a DPC was. But I see the shift this year. In the benefit conference this year, every session I attended talked about DPC and how critical it is for a health plan. I think the shift is already there. In the last 12 months, I see a lot of shift in having DPC in the plan. So what I tell you is, put your seat belts on, strap on your seat belts. DPC is about to fly. Thank you. <laughs>